Almighty God, graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men, to suffer death upon the cross. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for Good Friday is from Isaiah chapters 52 and 53. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them, they see, and that which they have not heard, they understand. Who has believed what they heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living? stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. 
By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 4 and 5. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me?
So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest, but Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, so they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. Hail thou art with anguish, with sore abuse and scorn. How doth thy face now languish that once was bright as morn grim death with cruel rigor hath robbed thee of thy life thus thou hast lost thy vigor thy strength Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, 
If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. What thou, my Lord, hast suffered was all for sinners' gain. Mine, mine was the transgression, but thine the deadly pain. Lo, here I fall, my Savior, tis I deserve thy place. Look on me with thy favor, and grant to me thy grace. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. 
Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. Last Wednesday, our gospel tailed off with Pontius Pilate asking a cynical rhetorical question. We heard it again tonight. What is truth? But it turns out that he was asking the wrong question. The real question is not what is truth, but who is truth? Today we look on as the truth hangs on a cross, bearing the sins of the whole world in order to reconcile us to God the Father. Truth was incarnate in Jesus Christ, and he willingly walked this path for you. Our sermon series throughout this season of Lent has centered on God's call through the prophet Joel for his people to return to him, to admit to your sinful nature, to come to the one who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, the one who loves you, who provides for you, and who sent his son to die for you because he relents over disaster. His call today is for you to return to truth, to turn to Jesus Christ, for he is your life and your salvation. The chief priests and the scribes and the whole council had delivered Jesus over to Pontius Pilate. They insisted that he had done evil and deserved punishment, even death. Pilate was on to them. He knew they were driven by selfish motives, but he was backed into a corner. His choice was impossible. Put an innocent man to death or lose control of the town as the population erupted in a riot. Everything was working according to plan, but it was not the plan of the chief priests. It was a plan that God himself had put together, a plan of salvation necessitated by mankind's fall into sin at the temptation of Satan, a plan that included a battle between the offspring of the serpent and the offspring of the woman a plan that required that the heel of the Son of Man be bruised, but would finally be complete as the head of the serpent's offspring was crushed and death was stripped of its power. This plan would play out on the cross, and Jesus was the focus of the whole thing. Pilate tried to placate the crowd, the accusers. He had Jesus flogged and tortured, mocked and insulted, beaten to within an inch of his life, dressed in a purple robe in a sarcastic nod to his divinity. And then he brings Jesus out to the people in all his weakness. I find no guilt in him, but look, I've punished him for you. One wonders what Pilate is up to in presenting Jesus this way. He may be seeking to arouse pity for Jesus, hoping they'd seen enough blood. That would allow him to release Jesus and get out of this mess. 
But the plan was already in motion, and there would be no changing the outcome. Jesus had to die. Crucify him! Crucify him! John tells us it was the chief priests and the officers who cried those words, but it was not just they, it was you and I. Our sinful nature rises up even as Christ demands our attention. The law sets standards for our actions, and we want no part of that. You shall have no other gods? Fine, I'll have only one God, and it will be me. This man, this son of God, wants first place? No, he must die. Crucify him. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Ha, this man has blasphemed and made himself the son of God. Crucify him. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy? You can't tell me what to do. Crucify him. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not covet. Crucify him. You rebel at God's leading. Your sinful nature wants nothing to do with it because it is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Your sinful nature rises up before the truth and closes its ears as it shouts, Crucify him! But the truth is not so easily silenced. The truth echoes in your ears even as it hangs lifeless on a cross. The truth slips past your defenses and the word softens your heart. You may cry out in anger, Crucify him! But the truth whispers gently in your ears, Yes, crucify me that is the only way out of this mess. Someone has to die for all that you have done, and I have come for just that purpose. Crucify me. Look at the cross. Look at the one who hangs on it, bearing your sins, taking your punishment. His appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Look at this man. Look at your God, bruised, beaten, bleeding, suffering. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. He dies for you. He carries your griefs, your sorrows, your sins your guilt. But why? Why did it have to be like this? It was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. He poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. It was the will of the Lord to crush him. God said, crucify him. Crucify my son. It has to be. He is your Savior, your Lord, who died for your sins, who made intercession for you, who willingly poured out his soul to death so that you would have life. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. And so your heart, led by the Holy Spirit, also cries out, crucify him, but not in anger. No, now it is because you see that there is no other way. All your righteous deeds are like filthy rags, and you can't fix it. You can't be good enough. You can't be without sin. You can't win your own salvation. Whatever good you might manage to pull off is completely overshadowed by your sinful nature. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With God, you can be saved. But someone must endure the penalty. God's wrath must be satisfied. The wages of sin must be paid. Someone has to die. And that someone is Jesus. He lived the perfect life you could not. He has taken all of your sin on himself. He took all of it to the cross to satisfy God's wrath. And he gives you his own righteousness in return, asking only that you trust him and leave the work to him. Tonight, as you survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, may you hear God's call to return to Him, to return to truth, 
to trust in the one who has promised you salvation and eternal life. Return to truth. Look at the cross. Look at the one who hangs on it, beaten, bruised, bleeding, suffering, bearing your sins, taking your punishment. Look at this man. Look at your God. S look and see his love. Look and see your salvation. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? May the peace of God granted through the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of Jesus Christ keep you focused on the one who lived, died, and rose again to secure your salvation and eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
salvation. Oh, love, how strong you are to save. You lay the one into the grave. Who built the earth's foundation? Lord, when your glory I shall see and taste your kingdom's pleasure, your blood my royal robe shall be, my joy be. And enjoy beside you. So he delivered them, him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. The, there will be a, a short introduction to the verse of the hymn.
But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. My Savior be thou near me when death is at my door then let thy presence cheer me forsake me never more when soul and body languish oh Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Be thou my consolation, my shield when I must die. shall then behold thee upon thy cross shall dwell my heart by faith enfold thee who dieth thus dies well
Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the world. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, for I know my transgressions. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Let me hear joy and gladness. Hide your face from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. had despair reigned o'er us, have mercy on us, O Jesus, O Jesus. Lamb of God, pure i 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Almighty and everlasting God, you willed that your Son should bear for us the pains of the cross and so remove from us the power of the adversary. Help us so to remember and give thanks for our Lord's passion that we may receive forgiveness of sin and redemption from everlasting death. 